Hey, it's Dr. K here again. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about technology. I told you I would. So one of the best technologies that you're going to run into at uh, Georgia State University is um, in the student resources uh, tab of your regular iCollege. So when you first sign into iCollege before you go into the class, you go into student resources and it says Grammarly information. OK, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to highlight this access code and copy it. All right. So um, right click and copy it. And then I'm going to go to this Grammarly.com uh, um, thing. Now, I'm already signed up for Grammarly, of course, but you need to sign up. So you're going to go up here to this right hand corner and follow up the sign up instructions. Make sure you only use your Panther ID. That's the uh, your name, you know, your ID at student.gsu.edu, that email. Only use that email. And then when you go in to verify it, you're going to come back to Grammarly and you're going to have another page and it's going to ask for that verification code. So that's when you paste that in. Okay, once you're in Grammarly, um, I'm going to go into mine. It should look something like, let's see if I can get in here. It should so look something like this. Um, now, what you can do is you can upload papers into it or you can cut and paste papers into it. I would not create my paper in it. The only reason I wouldn't do that is because I'm not sure if it would save your paper if like the electricity went out or something. I'm not sure if I would trust it to do that. So I would always make it in something else and then maybe cut and paste it in here. Um, but it will check not only spelling, but it'll check grammar and it'll check uh, usage. It will um, it'll even check, uh, you know, whether it's too wordy or if you can, you know, make changes. So I always ask my students, please, please run this through Grammarly before it goes to your peer response person. OK, um, Grammarly is very effective. You get the premium account through GSU. So I think you're going to really enjoy using it. Um, and I think it's going to make your English a lot better, too. Um, everybody has issues with English, so Grammarly can help address those. Mine was spelling. Oh my gosh, I am a terrible, well, I call it a creative speller. I'm a creative speller, okay? I'm a creative person, so as Mark Twain said, I could never respect a man who could spell a word only one way. That's definitely like me. So um, <laughs> spell checkers and Grammarly have been a lifesaver. Also, if you want to download Grammarly into your or upload, I guess, into your computer. Um, it will check even things like email, social media posts, stuff like that. It's really, really good. Unfortunately, it will not fix your stupid autocorrect on your texting. Yeah. OK. All right. So let's go and look at a couple other things that you can get uh, from GSU. Uh, so if I open a new tab and I go to GSU, student um, software it will open this university licensed software gsu technology okay and uh, you may not have known it but your wonderful tuition has already paid for so you might as well use these accounts now one of the most important one and one you're going to need this week is your Microsoft Word suite. So if you do not have Microsoft Word on your computer or if you have a very old version of Microsoft Word and you need to up, um, update it or if Microsoft Word came with your computer but you already used your first 90 day trial period or whatever, um, all of those things, it will update the Microsoft Word on your computer. And as long as you're at GSU, you can use Microsoft Suite for free. So, and it's not just the one in the cloud. It's like the real one that you download into your computer. So it does take about an hour to download, but you really want it. Okay. So um, it's like a $150 program that you've already paid for. You might as well use. So in addition to that, you can get ArcGIS, AutoCAD, ChemDraw. You can get your private network, which is really handy. If you're going to stay in a hotel, if you live in an apartment building with kind of general Wi-Fi, this will protect your um, privacy when you're using the Internet. Um, you can get Dropbox, EndNote, um, there's Grammarly again, Mathematica, which is, and I'll talk about that in a minute, that's the um, premium version of Wolfram Alpha. Um, 
and here's Microsoft. Here's the Microsoft Suite download button. You're definitely going to want to download this. It will take you about an hour, though, so give yourself some time. Um, I'm not sure what these other ones are at the end. I think they all have to do with computer science, but if you know what they are, you're probably going to be really, really happy to have them. Okay, so um, let's talk also about some other things that you can get. Okay, so um, if you are a GSU student or actually any uh, college student with an EDU email address, um, you want to go to, especially this week now that the um, the new uh, new version of the Lord of the Rings uh, TV series is out on Prime, you want to go to Prime Student. And if you are a student, click on Student Membership and you can sign up for um, Prime Student and Prime Student will give you free Amazon Prime for six months and then after that it's half price for I think four years and then mm, you have to pay the regular price so <laughs> try to get that degree in four years so that you can save on Amazon Prime there you go all right um, next piece of technology you want to know about is you want to make sure that you are studying effectively okay let's talk about studying for a second here. Um, you're going to get some textbooks and you're really excited about learning the first couple of weeks of class. It might have already worn off because we're moving into the third week, but right now you're probably pretty excited about getting your reading done. Now let me tell you a couple things. The first thing is when you're highlighting text, make sure you only highlight questions, never answer. So if your textbook says, for example, there's five sensory systems in the human body, they are, and then it gives you hearing, seeing, tasting, feeling, you know, all of those things. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to only highlight there are five sensory systems in the human body. You're not going to highlight the answer, okay, which is what they are. Um, and as you go through in your reading, in your textbook, you're only going to highlight those questions. Now, the reason for that is you don't want to waste time. Time is very, very important, in, especially in college. So when you go back to study, after you've read this, you can then skip for each question. You've basically highlighted all the questions you're going to have for the test. So you go to the question, you, you read it, and ask yourself, do I know what five systems those are? If you don't, you can read below it. If you do, you can skip to the next one. It's going to save you a ton of time, okay? Also, when you're reading, get yourself a system. For example, um, when I'm reading in um, anything, I put a square around any name, a name of a place, a name of a person. I put a circle around dates and numbers. I put an underline under things that I have a question about or I think are interesting, and then I write in the margin. And also if there's whole sections, like I'm reading a novel and it's just a description of where she's staying or where he's going or whatever, I'll just put a line down it and I'll write description of travel to London or something next to it, okay? Um, and in that way, I'm actively reading and it's going to help you a lot, all right? Okay. So those are some things that you need to know about reading. Now, also, when I'm reading a novel, for example, I'll, you know, do those little short things. I'll summarize each couple of paragraphs, write a line down, write a quick one-sentence summary. Then before I turn the page, I'll go to the top of the page. I'll write a summary of that page. Then I go to the next page, and I do a summary of one or two articles, you know, I'm one or, one or two paragraphs as I'm going down, write a one to two sentence summary, then I write at the top of the page what, this, what that page is about. That helps me not only to really connect with the reading and make sure that I'm always with it, but it also helps me find things if I need to find it for writing a paper or if I need to find it quickly in an open book test. And if you have to get through, I'm hoping you don't have this situation, but if you have to get through reading really fast in a textbook, you forgot to read something and you have a quiz, Okay, there's two things you can do. The first thing is you read the first chapter, the first line of every paragraph, and the last paragraph. Okay, um, that will give you a summary of the chapter. Now, if, if you want to save even more time, you can use Quizlet. And I'm going to go into Quizlet right now. Quizlet, or you can use Study Blue or any other of these studying, but Quizlet's the one I use. So I'm going to go into Quizlet. Now, let's say I, I wanted to look up um, 
a uh, particular book, a particular chapter. So I'm going to look up biology uh, uh, 101. Maybe there's a book like that. I don't know. And then I'm going to put chapter four. Okay. Um, so usually if you put also, this is pretty general uh, for biology 101. Um, but if maybe the book was called that and maybe there's a, an author name. So as specific as I can get and I can go into the chapter, it'll give me flashcards for that chapter. Um, and a lot of times the flashcards are made by the professors. Also, always search for your professor in Quizlet um, because what's really interesting is a lot of the professors create their tests on Quizlet and a lot of students don't realize that. Um, so <laughs> you can really, uh, you can get a preview of your test or study to uh, test former tests in that, in that teacher's um, class by looking up the teacher. So I'm going to uh, search right here for Kasorla, which is my last name. And you'll see, oh, look, Kasorla, um, I have a, this was when I, back way a long time ago when I taught at Georgia Piedmont Technical School part time. Um, when was that? I don't know, 2014? Yeah, there you go. Um, so it has my, um, my quiz that I had set up. So five ways you can start an essay. Um, and there's the, the answer. What does P before Q refer to? Actually, a lot of these still re relate to what I teach today. Um, so you're going to... Um, you can go through and actually study these. Uh, you can study for anyone's, and there's, of course, advertisements. Let me just do this. Okay, um, you can go through and study for anyone's test um, in a very quick way that way. It'll help you a lot with your quizzes and stuff like that, okay? Also, I'm going to highly recommend, uh, you don't have to do this for my class because I already have a pretty close connection with my students, but in other classes, you want to show up at office hours, either virtual office hours or regular office hours, at least once in the semester. Early in the semester is good, so your professor will remember you. And just ask them a general question, like, how is it best to succeed in your class? Do you have any advice for me? You know, kind of, kind of questions. Um, because that professor will then remember you, and it always helps with grades if they remember that you came to their office hours. Okay, I hope that helps you so far. If you have any questions about technology or um, any, anything we're doing in the class, always text me. And um, have a good weekend. Take care.